Here's another version of the Ram Bamboo Handle Bag. I, I love this. I've made so many of them. Um, I have shown you on a previous video this one, just to show you how to make the bag and put the handles on. But this time I've used our kitchen, uh, our Lemons Kitchen Fabric Panel. So I just wanted to show you what a fun and fresh and summery bag this is going to make and give you an idea of a project that you can make that's a little bit different to the aprons and the oven mix and tea cozies and things that we've been making with the Lemons Panel. So I've used it with a sky blue lining. Look how big and roomy this is on the inside. So I'll take you all the way through how I've made it, but I did want to show you another video because the measurements of this are very slightly different to the measurements on the instructions, purely because this is a panel. On the instructions, it tells you um, to cut the two main pieces 12 inches wide. The panel isn't quite wide enough to do that. These are 11 and a half inches wide. That's the only difference in the whole bag, 11 and a half instead of 12. Um, but I just think it's, it, it's so fun and it's such an easy make. And if you are making lots of them, as in if you're selling or you're gifting them, it looks impressive as well, doesn't it? So I'll leave you the details below with the links to my website. The handles and the instructions are available together. You can use any kind of fabric that you like to make it. Um, and I've used a G700 interfacing. It doesn't need to be too heavy, so I wouldn't use a fusible fleece or wadding or batting because of the gathering. So we want a firmness to the bag, but we still want it to be able to gather, which, I've, which is why I've chosen the G700. But I think you'll agree, it's such a fun bag. It, it's, it's so simple to make, but it does look quite impressive which is one of the reasons why I seem to have made so many of them. So I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Let's get sewing. So I've cut out my pattern pieces and on the outer pieces I've fused some G700 interfacing to the wrong side. You will need some kind of interfacing I think or the bag's going to be very soft unless you're using something like a canvas or a heavy weight of fabric but we don't want this to be too big or, or too um, thick or heavy because this is going to be gathered to thread through the handle so we, we still need to, that to be able to kind of ruche up easily. So I'll put the lining pieces to one side for now and one of the outer pieces and these are the side pieces and these are going to go facing inwards to each side of the bag and I'll just measure the right distance from the bottom which is three and a quarter inches and then just pop those in place And I'll hold those there with a couple of pins. And same on this side. And then I'll sew down each side with my quarter of an inch seam allowance. same on this side. And then the pins come out. And we're going to sew the opposite sides to the opposite side of the outer fabric. So let's, let's do it this way. So same distance from the bottom. So I'll measure that again in just a second. So that's three and a quarter inches. It needs to go up just a little bit more. That's it. A couple of pins in here. I don't know how I bent that one. And let's flip this over to the opposite side and pin the same distance from the bottom. So this is going to form 
the shape of the bag. So I'm sewing these together in effect into a tube. A couple of pins to hold. And then we'll sew down each side. pin cushion before I lose them and that's the shape I have again with all four sides sewn together so the next thing we're going to do is to sew the base together just across here and again if you wanted to pin these together before you sew that's absolutely fine I find it easier to just line up the edges as I'm actually sewing. Set the thread. And then we'll open out the side and the base, like so, and sew straight across here. Backwards and forwards. Hi, hey, Bob. I'm just going to squish the seam open as I come to it. It's not terribly important to do that. But and up to this side. And the same with the opposite corner. So again, just pull this open so that the side seam sits across. Oh, sorry, the base seam sits centrally to the side and so straight across. And then let's turn this the right side out. Push out the corners. And that's how the outside's looking. And then we need to do exactly the same with the lining. So my lining pieces work exactly the same way. So we'll take these two pieces, just like before, three and a quarter inches from the bottom and we're going to sew this together in exactly the same way as we did with the outside of the bag but this time we're going to leave a turning gap in one side of around about three inches and then with the lining inside out and the outer bag the right side out we're going to push the outer bag inside the lining so that they're right sides together. And then sew all around the top. Again, if you want to secure that with pins, that's fine. So let's just start across the top here. So line up the two edges together and away we go. So again, if you, if you wanted to pin this all the way around, just make sure that the edges are all lined up, then that's absolutely fine. 
be confident enough to just go for it without pinning, then do that too. So again, just keep lining up the edges as we go. Start with the needle down when you turn around. And so into the corner. Now where the seam is here, I'm going to sew up to the edge of the seam here and then go straight across from that same seam line. So that's my next two pieces to go together. So up to where the seam is already and stop with the needle down. Let's turn this around and line up the next two edges. So I'm turn turn this around at a right angle. And then sew straight across. And we'll do the same when we get to this bit here as well. So just move my iron out of the way. So line up the edges. Just take it up to the stitch line. Turn around. Draw these two pieces together and sew. Back down here. Now this is all going to be gathered and ruched up. Um, so don't worry too much about perfection. Perfection is very nice if it happens. But where you come into the corner bits here, don't don't worry too much if your if your points don't match perfectly because you're not going to see that when the bags all gathered around the top. So back down this side again, up to the seam that I've already sewn. And now overlap it a little bit by the seam allowance. Turn it around and up to the next seam. Not worried about seams being pressed open or to one side or anything like that, just however they want to go when you reach them is fine. And then we're right back to where we started. Let's snip off the corners. So that'll encourage the points to be a little bit more pointy when we turn this the right side out. And then where I made the right angle of the stitches in the corner here, I'm going to snip right up to the stitch on all four corners. So I don't know if you can just see where that stitch line is. Let's go right into that corner. And that'll make a difference when we turn this the right side out. It'll be neater. Just missed a little bit there. Look, didn't quite catch the lining. But it's not a worry because I can simply go back over that area and make it right. Oops, round you go. That's it, and we'll snip into that corner. And where's my turning gap? Let's turn the whole thing the right side out. And then we'll give it a quick press. So I'm just pushing out the corners. Make sure those areas here are nice and neat as well. Push that out, push that out. If you have a, um, a turning tool would be useful just to get those points really pointy or a knitting needle, a skewer, something that isn't sharp but is pointy enough to push out the points. Okay, so when I'm happy with all of this, 
I'll sew the turning gap closed. So where are you? Let's pull each side away from each other so that the ends fold in and just sew straight across. Just lining up the those folded edges. That's that. I'm going to push the lining inside the bag and give it a press. So let's turn this over. And I'm just trying to make sure that. The seam is right on the edge, so just roll it if it isn't, and on the corner pieces here, again I just want to make sure that they're nice and neat. the same on this side. So if you have a ham, a tailor's ham, that would be useful now to push it inside the bag and press over the seams. Again just try and get that seam right on the edge and the corner nice and pointy. That's fine, so that's how we're looking now. So let's move this out of the way and then I'm going to top stitch around the sides but not across the top here. So just around here, down there and back up again. I'm not top stitching across the top because I'm going to fold this over um, to put the, the handle through. Um, and that would mean I've got two rows of stitching, which I don't want to have. So I can just stop with the needle down, manoeuvre your fabric. Where do these threads come from? And sew all the way around. Now we're going to take our ruler and erasable marking pen. I'm using a, a friction pen and we're going to measure two and a half inches from the top and draw a line on the inside of the lining and flip it over. Here we go with the threads again. two and a half inches from the top. And then we'll put the handles on. So basically what we're going to do is to place the handle over the lining, fold over the fabric until it meets that line and we're going to sew. So don't pin this. Um, you're going to find it a lot easier to just do it as you go, take your time. So I'm going to move my needle over to the right hand side. If you have a zipper foot on your sewing machine, um, that might help because we want to get a little bit closer to this side. So let's wrap this over until it meets those lines. Secure with the back stitch here because that's going to take quite a, quite a bit of strain. Okay, and then here we go. So just fold it over and sew a few stitches at a time until you get to the bit where you can't do any more. And then we're going to move the handle down a bit so it's gathering on this side. Fold the fabric over again and sew a few stitches until you can't go any further. Move that over so you can see a bit better and then just move the handle 
So I'm not concentrating on all of the bulk around here. I'm just concentrating on where I'm stitching, lining up the fold over to the line as I'm going. And again, let's just move the handle back again, fold it over. Almost there. And again, when you come to this end, move this out of the way again, we're going to back stitch again to make that nice and secure. So that's the inside of my bag. And that's the outside. Then we'll do the same with the opposite side. So again, from the inside, place your handle over the lining, fold this over, up to that line, and sew. Make sure you back stitch to secure and line up the edges and so you might find that the needle bar um, hits on the, the handle a little bit it doesn't matter just pulling it out of the way So try and keep the handle nice and flat. Almost there. So again, just, just take your time with this. It is worth it because it's a real feature of the bag. Up to the other end. a lot of bag coming through just <laughs> bear with me a second there we go so now we can push the fabric down to the bottom of the handle same on this one and what I like to do with these because it will want to start curling around again I'll use some glue from my hot glue gun and just just drizzle a little bit of glue inside there to prevent it from moving on the handle So just do one side at a time, drizzle a little bit of glue inside and just hold that there for a couple of seconds while it sets, it doesn't take very long. So I mean you don't have to do this and you could use wet glue, it's just that hot glue sets so much quicker. So just a little spot because you may want to take the handles out and change the fabric at some point so don't put too much in there so if you do pull it away it's going to spoil the handles. And the same on this side. And last one here. So just push it around the corner. Same if you're using um, a round handle, not the ones, uh, these ones that we have on the website that have a, a slightly flat space to them. I think it's quite nice just to hold that in place where you want it to be. All right, and then let's push this out one more time. Oh, I love this with the glue, don't you? When you get the stringy bits to pull off. <laughs> so that's my bag finished. And two ways of using it. So you can either have the side bits out or the side bits in. I like them in, personally. But it does make um, quite a roomy bag which will be perfect for um, going to the beach maybe to keep your lunch in, maybe a cool drink, 
um, your hobbies. So uh, again, I've done, I don't know why I'm thinking on the beach, but you could take this to the beach with your knitting or your crochet or whatever it is you're doing. Um, I'm just going to press that inwards actually, because I like it pointing in. So I'm going to push out the sides and just press that in like that and encourage that to sit in by just pressing over the seams at the top. And there. But it's, it's a fun little bag, it's easy to make. It does look quite impressive, I think, if you're making these to sell or if you're gifting anything, because it looks a lot more complicated than it is. And with not having any fastenings or zips or closures or anything like that, it does make it quite an affordable bag. Um, if you are going to be making a few of these and, uh, and you're on a budget. So that's better. And that goes in there like that. And that is another little bag finished. I'll see you again next time. Bye bye.